<laughs> and it all happened. Two little villages lived beside one another. A vocal down the hill was a small place of black and amber. Barn died at the top of the hill, shone bright like the sky of blue and white. For years, the two neighbours fought it out in the national sport of GAA. The black and amber team tried and tried to make the talented blue and white team who were leagues ahead of them and had the strength and numbers to field two teams. As the black and amber team grew weaker, they decided they would use weapons, also known as hurries. They called this new team the Evoca Ladies Camogie Team. They grew in strength and even won titles. But they never felt like champions, as the great blue and white never even entered a team in this sport. They felt to beat their neighbours with weapons or hurries would only push them further into the darkness they were starting to occur. Black and amber numbers started to decline. Some players built themselves in strength and fitness and managed to climb the grey hill. They eventually welcomed into the blue and white team who took great care of their new followers and even allowed them to marry so they could become part of the great blue and white team today. The black and amber team tried everything to better themselves, both on and off the field. They created their own angel, Sally Kiss Angel. For years, they thought they were winning. As tourists fled to the area, uh, bring with them great wealth and wisdom. Until many years later, the black widow emerged from the blue and white team. Sally Kiss Angel is long gone, but the black widow lives on. One day, the great women of the blue and white team went down the hill and spoke to the leader of the black and amber team, Mr. Fatty, who was his name. It was decided that the two teams would meet in a sport that was unknown to both, boxing. A great night of sport and shenanigans was organised. They called it the Barnberry vs. the Voga Fight Night. Both teams were trained for eight weeks and on the 3rd of May, 2015, their fates would be decided. Mr. Fahey called upon the strongest men and women of what was left in the small village. They trained to the best of their ability. They were strong, willing and ready to fight. They even believed that they could win until the last few weeks of training, when even their own started to show who they truly believed would win, when the great blue and white colour started to show up around their very own village in local shops and pubs. It caused, caused great stress among their fighters, who in training had already shed blood for their beloved black and amber. The fear of the great blue and white had hit them again. Meanwhile, the great blue and white scattered their flock of fine, talented young men and women and handpicked the finest, some of, them of whom had even held the black and amber flag before, but it didn't bother. They would all fight for their beloved blue and white United as one, strong with fitness they could not be matched. Training complete, the fighters were ready to battle. On Sunday the 3rd of May, villagers descended on the Arta Bay Hotel, flags held high with pride, full of hope, both sides eager to win. It is late now, I will finish the story the next time we meet. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go then. Oh, I hope we have our light. Oh, jeez. <laughs>